Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Also, we would greatly appreciate if you consider supporting our channel on Patreon. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're going to discuss and learn the basics of the modern portfolio theory, the foundation of modern quantitative finance that has been laid by the famous economist Harry Markowitz in 1952 in his seminal paper Portfolio Selection that he has been awarded the Nobel Prize of Economics in 1990s for. The logic is very simple and it is important for individual investors like me and you and asset managers alike. If you have a universe of stocks or any other financial instruments that are characterized by some investment properties, most notably risk and return, or expected return in that case, then it is a very important problem to solve how to allocate your capital towards these financial instruments so that you achieve an optimal level of diversification and an optimal risk return trade-off for your risk tolerance. So how one might approach this issue? Well, starting to learn about modern portfolio theory and the Markowitz model is perhaps the easiest by considering a simple two-stock case when you can easily build the efficient portfolio frontier without any advanced maths. In this video, we'll do just that. And in later videos in this series, we will cover more advanced cases and more complicated solutions for this problem. But for now, let's consider an investor who wants to allocate their capital, their savings, towards two of the most famous US uh, blue chip stocks, Walmart and Caterpillar, that are well-established companies and you most likely already heard of them. So we have got stock price data for Walmart and Caterpillar for a 10-year period from mid-September 2010 all the way down to mid-September 2020. And uh, we want to figure out if an investor wants to allocate their capital just towards these two stocks, what is the optimal mix they can achieve? And what are the possible uh, combinations of risk and return this investor can get from investing into those two stocks? And what are the most efficient of such combinations? If we assume that the investor is rational and they prefer all other things held equal, higher returns and lower risk. So first of all, let's just calculate daily returns for our two stocks by just applying the usual formula, price today divided by the price yesterday minus one, and we apply this formula for both Walmart and Caterpillar for every single trading day we've got. Then we can calculate our average annualized returns for Walmart and Caterpillar. Annualized needn't be the case, but you need to be sure that all of your return and risk measures are at the same frequency and annualized is the most commonly used in that case because it's easy to compare it across different data sets. And uh, here, Markowitz makes the first cave it in his paper. He says that, well, to achieve optimal diversification, one needs to assign uh, plausible values of expected returns to our Walmart and Caterpillar stocks. So the easiest way to do that, perhaps, would be just to assign expected returns to be equal to average historical returns over a long time period. There are some notable limitations to this approach that we will discuss later on, but now let's just stick for that, for our simple two stock case. To calculate average annualized return for our two stocks across our 10 year period and annualize those, we need to bear in mind that we need to account for the constant rate of appreciation and we need to bear in mind that we've got a 10 year period. So we can just apply the product one plus function and select the whole area of returns, it would calculate the total rate of appreciation that we would have achieved by investing uh, a dollar in the Walmart stock mid-September 2010. To annualize this rate of appreciation, we need to adjust for a 10-year period, so raise it to the power of 1 over 10. This will bring the rate of appreciation to an annualized rate, so we are very close from calculating the annualized return. To do that, we just need to subtract 1. And as it is a matrix multiplication formula, because we multiply a bunch of one plus returns together, we need to enforce it using shift, control, enter, instead of just enter. So if we do just that, we get 
an annualized return, pretty respectable figure of 12.78%. And we can drag it across to get the same return for Caterpillar as well. And now we can be uh, concerned with uh, potential risks that are associated with investing all of your capital towards a single stock, either Walmart or Caterpillar. Calculating risk is even simpler. The most go-to measure for risk is standard deviation. So we can just apply the sample standard deviation formula, sttv.s, and enforce it towards the whole array of Walmart and Caterpillar returns. And that will give us daily standard deviation of a return. So to annualize it, we need to multiply this by the square root of the number of trading days in a year. And the most common figure used here is 252. That's the number of trading days in a year accounted for weekends and holidays in the US. For more details on how to scale volatility with time, please check other videos we've got for you in previous playlists. But as for now, just multiply and st sample standard deviation of Walmart return by the square root of 252 gives us Walmart annualized volatility of 19.31%. And applying it to Caterpillar, we'll get 28.62%. So in that case, uh, Walmart is much more preferable as an investment option individually than Caterpillar, as it provides an investor with a higher annualized return while exposing them to a lower value of annualized volatility. And in the chart to our right, we can see that the Walmart and Caterpillar stocks appeared as dots on this risk return scatter plot, and we can see just here how much more attractive Walmart is as an individual stock. Walmart allows you to obtain a higher value of return and provides you with a low value of risk, which is always preferable to a rational investor. But can we do better than that by diversifying our portfolio? by considering different combinations of Walmart and Caterpillar for an investment for our hypothetical client. Well, to consider uh, returns and risks of a portfolio, so a weighted average of investments into Walmart and Caterpillar, there are two simple formulas that have been proposed uh, all the way back in the 1950s by Markowitz, actually in his paper, that just use simple insights from mathematical statistics applied to financial data. Well, it's pretty clear that if you want to figure out the expected return of a portfolio of two stocks allocating some weight W1 to Walmart and some weight W2 to Caterpillar, the return of this portfolio would be just the weighted average of the returns of individual stocks that go into that, and the coefficients would be the weights. Well, if you allocate everything towards a single stock, for example, this is one and this is zero, then you'll get just the return of Walmart, the return of your first stock, and vice versa. But if you allocate your capital evenly, for example, 50% to Walmart and 50% of Caterpillar, your expected return would clearly be the weighted average of those two returns. It's not as simple with risk, though, because you're also con concerned with the degree of correlation between the returns of the two stocks or in that case with a degree of covariance, which is dubbed here as sigma 1, 2. Because you cannot treat the returns of Walmart and Caterpillar as independent, because, well, they are uh, listed on the same market, they are exposed to the same global and US-specific risks, so there is some degree of covariance over here. So to express the variance of the portfolio in terms of the variances of individual stocks and their covariance, the formula is also pretty simple, albeit slightly more tricky than in the case of return. You have to multiply squared weight by the variance of the first stock, squared weight of the second stock by the variance of the second stock, and two times the product of their weights times their covariance. So all that we're missing here is actually the covariance. So we can just apply the sample covariance formula, covariance.s, and select the two arrays with respective stock returns and it will give us daily covariance. And we need to scale this daily covariance to annualize it. And as covariance scales the same way variance does, we need to multiply it by the number of trading days in a year. So by 252 and not the square root of 252. So annualizing covariance like that, we get 0.0158. And now we're ready to go and calculate our efficient portfolios with different combinations of Walmart and Caterpillar and the risk return trade-off that we can achieve by allocating our capital just so. 
So let's consider different mixes we can achieve by investing some of our capital towards Walmart and some towards Caterpillar. So first of all, let's consider the trivial case where investing everything into Caterpillar. So our weight in Walmart would be zero, and the weight in Caterpillar would be one minus the weight in Walmart, which would be 100%, pretty clearly. And let's um, select some step, some increment, uh, in which we will increase the weight in Walmart gradually, and vice versa, decrease the weight in Caterpillar. So the second portfolio we'll consider will have a 5% greater weight in Walmart, and analogously a 5% lower weight in Caterpillar. So this portfolio hypothetically invests 5% into Walmart and 95% into Caterpillar. And we can drag it down until we get to the point where we have invested everything into Walmart and nothing into Caterpillar. And now we can apply these two formulas and assigning changing weights to our fixed expected returns, risks and covariance to get the values of risk and return for our efficient portfolios. So for risk, we need to multiply the first weight squared times the variance of the first stock. So it's standard deviation squared, and we need to lock this variance because we don't want it to change from portfolio to portfolio. It's fixed, it's what we assume the variance will always be for Walmart, plus the weight in Caterpillar squared times the variance of the Caterpillar stock, so locking this standard deviation and squaring it as well, plus two times the product of weights, so weight of Walmart times the weight of Caterpillar times their covariance, which is 0 0.0158. And we also lock the covariance here. And we see that this will give us the variance of our portfolio, but we need the standard deviation as, as this is the most common measure of risk and volatility. So getting standard deviation from variance is pretty simple. We just need to take the square root of the expression we've just typed. So the risk of a portfolio that invests 100% in Caterpillar, unsurprisingly, is just equal to the risk of Caterpillar. And that's a good check that we haven't screwed up anything. Now for the expected return of such portfolio, we just need to calculate the weight at sum of the expected returns of the stocks. So weight of Walmart times the expected return of Walmart, and we lock this uh, cell as well, plus the weight of Caterpillar times the expected return of Caterpillar. And we lock the return of Caterpillar as well. And now we can just bottom right click this all the way down, and in the chart to our right, we'll get this nice curve that is actually the efficient portfolio frontier. But not all parts of this curve are the efficient portfolio frontier, because this just shows us all the attainable combinations we can get by investing some proportion of our capital into Walmart and some into Caterpillar. First of all, we can see that we can actually reduce our risk quite a lot by diversifying our portfolio. For example, this point over here has a risk that is much lower than the risk of 19.31% of Walmart, but has a very close return to that of Walmart. And obviously, there are a lot of portfolios on this line that are better than Caterpillar individually. That's unsurprising as uh, Walmart is uh, more preferable than Caterpillar to any investor given these expected returns and risks. So what about uh, the efficient portfolio frontier? Which part of this curve is actually the efficient portfolio frontier? Well, thinking about it, we can see that the bend, the direction the curve goes changes. First of all, if we start from 100% in Caterpillar and start um, assigning higher and higher weights to Walmart, we can see that we get higher return and lower risk. So actually, every single point on this curve, all the way up until we get this point when the band changes its direction, is not efficient because every single other point on this curve at the following point is better objectively better for any investor because it provides high return and low risk. But the situation changes when the band changes and we get to the point where the risk is minimal. And we can see this point of minimum risk by looking at how the uh, value of uh, standard deviation of the portfolio changes. We can see that somewhere over here, when the combination of Walmart and Caterpillar are roughly 75-25, the risk uh, of the portfolio achieves the minimum value of 17.89%, and then it starts increasing 
as the return starts increasing as well. So the efficient combinations that some rational investor could prefer only starts from the minimum variance point all the way up towards Walmart. And this point, so this point, when the portfolio frontier starts bending, is the efficient portfolio frontier. But how to generalize this concept? What happens if we have three stocks? What happens if we have all the 500 stocks in S&P 500? What if we have thousands of stocks that have been listed throughout the world? Well, it's not that easy at that stage because we can't just subtract something from the weight of one stock and add this to the weight of the other stock because we have more than two stocks. What to do in that case? Well, in the following videos, we'll consider just that. But as for now, that's all there is for the efficient portfolio frontier with a two-stock case and the introduction to the modern portfolio theory. Please leave a like under this video if you found this introduction helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, economics or finance you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.